Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene, and the results are in. I'm officially hopeless. <laughs> you don't know how hard I tried to just go out and get some milk. Just some milk. Wanted to run to the store, get some milk, and run home like a normal person would do. Then I thought, how nice, though, it would be to have a very short video. Just a short little update video. And I can do that in my car from Cumberland Farms. Different location. Might be kind of fun. And I got in my car, and I drove myself to Cumbies. And then, when I got there, I see all the cars that are getting gas, and all the cars in the front of the store, and it's a brand new store, and I have to cross Main Street. I have to wait for the light. I got so overwhelmed, I just did not feel like going there. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to Rogers. I feel safe at Rogers. I can look and see if there's meat that I might want to pick up. So I came to Rogers. And I ended up buying more than I expected. So now I have an actual haul video coming up. I don't know why. Why can't I just be normal and do normal things and go out and get fucking milk like a human being would do? No, I see it as a lost opportunity if I go out the door and come back home and didn't record. And I will feel much better knowing I have at least a video out today because that takes the pressure off of having to record later. So I picked up ground beef. I think I kind of need some. And this happened to be only eight and three quarter pounds. It's usually a 10 pound bag, usually a little bit more. So not quite as much for me to have to freeze. It is $2.89 per pound. I paid $25.30 for this baby. What else did I get? I did get the milk. And I believe it was $3.74. I never really know. Right here, Smiley's brand milk. Yes, our milk is more expensive than many parts of the United States because we are a dairy state and it's regulated. I know some people told me that live in the U.S. that they pay like $1.67 for a gallon. It is Sunday. It is bologna day at Rogers. They have their German bologna on sale for $1.79 per pound. Oh, smells good. And I bought two pounds. I will probably separate those and freeze that. I ended up picking two packages of my bottom round at $2.99 per pound. I paid like $5.28 or something for this one. And I have another one in here. My mother also needed bread, but she doesn't care for the Shorefine brand of bread. And the other bread, if it's not on sale, is outrageously expensive. I'm not paying $3.99 for a loaf of bread. But this is interesting. Oatmeal molasses. She loves both of those ingredients. Always has. But if she's somehow wanting to put a damper on my day, especially before a trip, my mother gets, like, really on my case about things because she doesn't want me to go and have a good time. She really doesn't. <laughs> so, you know, she might say that she's not eating molasses anymore. Whatever. And but it was reduced 99 cents, and if she doesn't want it, the squirrels will love it. So, oatmeal molasses bread looks fucking good to me. Giving that a try. Oh, and I did get her some hamburger buns, because I thought she might like to make some sandwiches out of hamburger buns. And this is only $1.39. She can make a bologna sandwich in there. That's it. That all came up to, you know, I don't even know... I should know what a total is before I just hand over my credit card. It came up to $45.22. Next topic. Let Quickly, Fabric Frenzy. I am planning on Friday, December 8th. I'm planning on running it the same way I did the previous Fabric Frenzy. It was a long day, but it was exciting and I enjoyed it. On that Friday, I will be starting to spit out fabric listings as soon as I'm awake enough to do so. Last time, we started about 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It ran for 12 hours, and I was extremely brain fried at the end. I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum of maybe 10 hours. I think 10 hours is pretty good. All depends on when I start it, too. 
if I start later in the day, then we'll probably only go for eight hours. The way it works is I spit out fabric deals in my peanut gallery group. I give you the links. The link will take you to the blog where you can order the fabric if you want to. Somebody asked me if I do this live. No, there's nothing live. I don't want to do live for five minutes, let alone for 12 hours. <laughs> It's just links that nobody else has access to. Only the people who are in my Peanut Gallery Facebook group, and it's only for people in the United States of America or the military addresses. If you want to get in on the next one, you need to join the group. The link is always in the description box down below, so please join and you won't miss out. I wanted to be ready for that, a lot ready for it, before my trip. I only started working on it yesterday, but I will try this week to get a lot of listings up, and I'll still have a whole week when I get back to get more listings up. I'd like at least 30 again. That worked out well. If I happen to have more, well, that just means more deals will be spit out during the hour. And I like it that way because, first of all, it's what causes the frenzy because you don't know when something's coming out. You don't know if I have one of the item or five of the item. So it makes people have to just hurry up and jump on it without knowing what's coming out later. And I do get people asking me, are you going to have this or are you going to have that? And it's pretty much um, a secret. <laughs> if I were to let everybody know in advance what's coming up, they won't buy the stuff that comes out right now. That's the whole reason it's called a frenzy. That's the way I run it, and that's the way I like it, and it worked. I sold out of almost everything last time. Fabric Frenzy, December 8. Mark your calendars. The next thing, Derek, my son, will be back working on my blog. He used to help me on my blog when I, you know, had a lot of deals and stuff going on, and I had a large audience, and I wanted a variety of content. Well, after I gave up the deals, the coupon deals and stuff, I lost almost all my audience, and I'm slowly building that back up, and I'm at a point where I feel like additional content will be helpful for my blog, and that the current viewership will appreciate it. So he's going to be starting this week, a couple blog posts a day at most, here and there, when he can, and it's going to be other things like um, I want to focus, I always like to focus on frugal living kind of things because, not just because I was a deals blogger at one time, but because I am generally cheap. It's not that I'm cheap, it's just that I don't like to spend money unless I absolutely have to. And when I spend it, I want it to be a good deal. I'd rather spend $30,000 on a $60,000 car than $10,000 on a car that's worth $12,000. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Although I would never give a shit about an expensive car. <laughs> I've only bought one brand new car in my life, and it was when I was 19, I think. It was a Chevy Chevette. Liked that car. After that, I realized, no, you buy them used because you save a lot. Battery number one died, and I have less time on this one. I've got to be quicker. I don't, I don't know how to be quick. I don't even know how to be straight. I don't really remember my train of thought. Derek on the blog. I did want to mention, because I haven't mentioned it in a while, if you're interested in getting a daily update about my blog, it's one email per day. It's via email. I don't have it texted or any apps for that or anything like that. Old-fashioned email. Isn't that funny that email is now old-fashioned? On my blog, top left, I believe, there's a little box that you can enter your email, and you get one email per day as long as I have content on my blog. And and it will show you everything that was on my blog in the previous 24 hours, including my videos, because I put every one of my videos on my blog. So it's just another way you can get access to my videos in case you don't get notices from YouTube and all that junk. <laughs> the next thing is that I'm leaving for Memphis a week from today. So this week is going to be hell for me. That's when I stress out the most. Anticipating the trip and all that it entails, I absolutely hate all that. Once I'm on the plane and I'm shut off from the world, no internet, I don't buy internet on the plane, you know, that's when I can finally just start to relax a little bit. And then, of course, I look forward to seeing Skylar and Derek, and that's all good. It is still 
very hard being there because I'm out of my element, but it's going to be good. And Derek and I will be talking business. I absolutely love talking business with anyone. My dream is to be in a business with my son and or with my granddaughter. I'm hoping someday that can happen, but we will be talking business about my blog and stuff like that. And also about fabric. I have some ideas for Derek. He likes to work from home. He has cut back on his musician gigs. He is no longer in a band regularly, but he does um, fill in like he was in Nashville this weekend filling in for a band who needed a bass player so he does still do that he rather do it less often and he likes to travel to Nashville you know just to hang out see his old friends things like that and you know go on tour with them for a weekend or whatever as opposed to just playing you know the same casino or whatever every weekend so hey he's been doing this for like what over 20 years now so he has the right to take a break so I'm taking advantage of his newly found weekend freedom and I'm trying to reel him in so that we can finally do something together. And he's open to that. So we'll be talking about that more while I'm there. So I leave on Sunday. I will have both batteries charged and I will be taking you with me. Last but not least, because I know this is a subject that not many like to hear about, but I'm going to talk for a few minutes about Patreon. My Patreon page is not even a month old yet, and it's doing very well. It is a lot of work. It's very hard to get people on board with that. But I keep trying. I'm not giving up. I am going to give it at least three months to see you know, if I really like it, and I think it's worth the effort, because I'm putting a ton of fucking effort into Patreon, I'm telling you, and it almost feels self-defeating when you know you're putting content up that's going to be watched by maybe 10 people, as opposed to, you know, 2,000 views on a video, but I do it because I have to think of it as I am building a whole new audience there, and I just have to start from scratch, and I have to treat it like it's booming, because that's how you become bigger. You have to, in your head, think you're big already. I, I don't mean like big, like, you know, I'm a smarty pants and know what I'm doing. I'm talking about like you have to pretend to yourself that there's a big audience there because if you feel like the audience is there, the audience will come and then they will have that content you created. So, you know, it's like you're recording now for the future. My point is, before this battery runs out too, I do have a lot of people who still find my Growing Up Crazy, the darker side of Darlene channel, and they want to know why I stopped that. Will I ever be doing that again? I have not uploaded to that channel in over a year, and there's all kinds of reasons why not. At first, it helped me a lot to talk about things like that, a narcissistic mother and depression and different things like that, and just talking about it was so healing because I had some validation that I felt like I could step back from it, but then you still go through things where you feel like you're throwing people under the bus, but then I feel like some people deserve to be thrown under the bus, you know, so it's just a whole ball of conflicting feelings when you talk about such personal things. But I was thinking that what might be good for me is, because it is healing in many ways, and I know it does help others because it lets people know that they're not alone. I am thinking about maybe starting something like that on Patreon and I know that some of you will be like, you said you'd not ever, you know, stop doing your videos. I'm not stopping my videos on YouTube. If you have noticed, I put up a video almost every single day on YouTube. This is not taking away from my regular content. It's just giving me another platform for different content. I, I haven't talked about those subjects, narcissism and all that, in over a year. So it's not like I've all of a sudden taken that away from you guys. It's gone. I took it away from you guys a long time ago, for those of you who liked it. And now I'm just saying that if I bring it back, it's got to be a place where I feel very safe. Because I feel safe in Patreon. Because people who are willing to pay to hear something are there for the right reasons. And they're not going to trash you. Hey, I've kicked two people out of my Patreon group so far because they were just there to cause trouble. I don't need that, but 
it's going to be a lot less trouble than YouTube. And I don't want to be open to comments on YouTube that are so hurtful and drive me so insane when you talk about something personal like that because it's hard to put yourself completely out there and be honest and open about such touchy subjects but I do want to do that I just need a safe place to do it and I think Patreon is the way I'm going to go for that so for those of you who are looking for those kind of videos they might come back but but it's going to have to be worth my while to, to do that because it does take me away from other things like even my blog, which is why I need help on my blog because the more I record, the you know more I can't do other things. So I'll get my help on my blog and then the next step is a maid. <laughs> That's it. I've got to go because this is running out and I can't believe I have such a long video to edit now. What happened to picking up milk? What? Why? Why can't I do those things? Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye!